If you are new to me, I'm Michelle, and I am a visibility and marketing coach, and I love helping female coaches like yourself to simplify your marketing so that you can get seen, get heard, and get paying clients. going to talk about what is the actual cost of your visibility. I talk about visibility marketing a lot, but exactly what is the cost besides hiring a coach and learning the marketing strategies and all the headache that you have to go through? What is the actual cost? And more importantly, you might be someone who have had this experience in the past where you're getting a sales pitch or an invitation that pop into your email or maybe it's your dm on linkedin someone reach out to you and they're just so fascinated about your work and they cannot wait to invite you to come to their show but little did you know that by accepting the invitation there's actually a cost attached to it in order to be on their show or in order to publish publish a article or a blog on their platform you actually need to pay and is it even worth your money to put that investment when you have no idea where the return is coming back now today i'm going to share some tips and my belief and these are all my opinion right i'm not trying to decide for you whether or not this is something that you want to do but hopefully by hearing my personal experience it's going to allow you to make a more conscious choice and that you have more information to decide whether or not this is something that worth investing so what is the pay to pay first of all so pay to play basically it means that exactly like that you have to pay somebody in order to get into the door of of what you want to accomplish whether it's a podcast or maybe it's a conference or maybe you've been invited as a co-author for a book that's going to have multiple uh authors publishing that book and while it sounds great to have your name out there to be attached to something but when i look at my business i always look at it from the perspective of what is the return of my investment right if i am going to pay i don't know two hundred dollar to two thousand dollar to have my name out there then i want to be able to have a tangible return and what is that return of investment now we all know <clears throat> that sometimes that return of investment it may not be i get a client who can replace that two thousand dollar i just spent right it could be i'm just gonna get my name out there and that is basically it but is that worth your two thousand dollar right and that is something that i want you to really sit down and think about is it worth your two thousand dollar to put your name out there inside a book that you are a co-author with and you don't even your name so this is the part that really gets me and drop it into the comment if they had ever happened to you i remember in my earlier coaching journey someone had reached out to me and that was exact what they were offering they're offering me to be the co-author inside a book and that investment would cost me two thousand dollar and it's a well perspective <laughs> they've been doing this for a quite some time and so i got curious i jump onto the call and just like a sales call they'll walk you through their process and what's expected of you and what chapter do you need to write and once you write they publish it and they do the all the marketing packaging everything but little did you know that your name is not even on the front page cover your name is inside the book of the chapter and so there i was i was thinking well if my name is not even on the front cover page then what does that get me it gets me nothing right i am a chapter inside that book so does it really worth two thousand dollar of my investment not just the money but the time actually i need to spend and sit down and write that chapter time is money the fact that i sat down and i put a my, my word my thoughts my wisdom into this chapter and what do i get out of it i get a chapter inside a book and that was going to cost me two thousand dollars so i want this to be like a lesson 
that I have learned and that you can take away because I don't want the same thing happen to you. And maybe that would be an idea that you do like to try and you do have the money to invest in such a way to get the experience that's more power to you. But by all means, go for it, right? But for me, I always look at it as what is the return of investment? Is it worth my $2,000 to be a chapter inside someone else's book? And so my answer was really clear early on in my coaching business journey. That was not something that I wanted to do. And so how do I put my name out there and still getting a better return of investment? And that was something that I was struggling with in my first year of coaching business. And I had to try and figure out how do I create this visibility so that I can build my credibility, build my authority without causing a dime <laughs> in doing what some of these marketing strategies are doing. People have different way of doing it. So I'll just leave it at that. Pay to play. So that's basically what it is, right? So in order to get into the door, you need to pay for them to use their platform so that you can put your name in there. So I use the uh, co-author of a book. So the problem with that is you're not even on the front page of the, the book cover. That's problem number one. So even though you are putting these time to think that you're building visibility, but you're not. Right. Even when you create a marketing plan, when you're marketing this book, uh, you're helping the author who's on the front page cover to market their credibility, their authority, their audience. And essentially, you're probably going to get a link where it's built, allowing them to build their list rather than yours. So I want you to really think about this, right? You're paying $2,000, I'm, I'm using this number and this, this could be more nowadays, it could be less. I don't know what the current market value is, but back then it was $2,000. And so you're spending this amount of money to help someone to build their audience. So I really want you to think about what's in it for you. And that's the biggest problem that I saw. Now, yesterday, one of my clients, Alice, had put into the group and she had always been curious about asking this question, right? Because she had also uh, been reached out to by podcasts who wanted to invite her to come and speak on podcasts. But the cost behind that podcast production is anywhere from like $25 to $30 in order for her to speak on podcasts. And I was sitting there, I'm reading the comment and I have a podcast and I've been on other podcasts numerous times. And in fact, I've just put three other po podcasts yesterday and I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, no, 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 no. And this is something that I really want you to remember, right? If you want to create that visibility, if you want to build a coaching business and leverage your social presence, you essentially is the contributor to the podcast. You bring values to the places that you're going to be speaking and you are creating content for the podcast host. And if anything at all, the podcast should be paying you to be on their show because you're bringing so much value into it. And now I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, well, Michelle, but I'm just early on on my journey and my name is not big. I don't have you. I don't have like your social following. I'm not big on social media. Who would want to pay me to be on podcast? But it does not cost you anything to be on podcast, my friend. And you can be on so many different platforms, so many different podcasts for absolutely no cost. Why? Because as a podcast host, I am constantly looking to bring on speakers, to bring on guests who can come and bring more value to my audience. So I'm looking for content creators out there who can come to my show and bring value to deliver to my audience. And I am so appreciative uh, and so honored to have these guests bring in their expertise to my show. So there's no way I'm going to come around and say, hey, in order to be on my podcast, even though it does take a lot of time to do the production, right, to do the editing, to do the, the artwork and everything, it takes time to put a podcast or to produce a podcast episode. I get that. And that's part of being a business owner, being a content creator, and being someone who's out there and trying to educate and reach out to your audience. It's all part of that journey. It's part of what we do when we create content. So I don't come to my guests and say, hey, I'm going to charge you $30 and, and $20 in order for you to be on my show. 
people want to do that. That's their call, right? But it doesn't cost you anything to be on any type of podcast show. So you don't need to pay in order to be on podcast. So I went like so much. You can tell that I'm really passionate about this. So there's a lot of problem with the with the pay to play. Now the other problem with the pay to play is. A lot of time, when you're new and when you're inexperienced in the visibility and the, in the marketing world, you might not have that message dialed in yet, right? If you're someone who just started out in your coaching business, maybe zero to、uh, three year, up to three year, and you're still trying to figure out your niche, your I help statement, like exactly who do I need to reach to and how am I going to serve them, then by paying these pay to play or to actually pay someone to get visible. You're actually doing yourself a disservice because now your message is not only diluted, but it's very confusing. And so that it, there's a lack of、uh, positioning for yourself as the expert because now I'm totally confused exactly to what do you do? Because you can be on this podcast, you can be on that podcast, you can contribute to all these different platforms and messages and topics. That creates a lot of confusion for the audience who actually needs your help, and I created a resource for you. If that is something that you are struggling with, I have this three-step guide that's going to walk you through the process of how to narrow that I help statement down, and that is probably your first and foremost important step if you want to bring your message out there because you need to know exactly what are you talking about and what topic you're going to be focusing on so that you can position yourself as the expert in that niche and. Once you have that, then you can narrow down and think about. Okay, so that podcast is for an audience of female entrepreneur, and that podcast focuses on transition after big life loss. Maybe it's grieving. I was just on the call this earlier today. And one of my clients is doing grieving, and so that would be a topic, and that would be something that she can focus on to be on a guest on a show or to contribute to articles that's out there where they're inviting writers and bloggers to contribute articles. So as you can see, once you have that statement narrowed down, then you can focus on okay, so which one am, am I going to get the most return out of this? Investment that would allow me to have the most bene benefit to attract the right audience into my business, and essentially these people who attract to you your message, they're the one who's going to be more likely to become your paying clients, right? So if you don't know who your audience is, and you went ahead and start. Pitching everywhere to all the podcasts that's that's inviting guests, or you're actually paying someone to be a co-author inside a book without understanding who are actually going to buy and read those books. <laughs> That would be like two step backward than moving forward, right? And I'm sharing this because I'm so passionate about it, obviously, because I had done exactly what shouldn't be doing, right? I did everything that. I told you not to do because I've done it and wasted so much time. So now I want to make sure that you don't waste time, like I did. So first of all, how do you do this right? You need to narrow down your message, and I have a resource for you. I drop it into the comment, and I'll make sure to link it again. No matter where you're watching this from, I'll make sure to link it again. If you are someone who still need to narrow that message, that would be the resource I want you to have. Okay, so you can grab that. And number two is you want to make sure that even if it's the pay to play, you can still do the pay to play. But you wanted to make sure that you are actually getting a return of investment out of this whole investment, right? So you want to ask a couple of questions. First of all, you want to ask who is going to read this article, who is going to listen to this podcast, who is going to pick up this book and read this book. Right, you want to make sure that whatever that you put in, the money that you invest, is being used in front of the right audience. And if you're still confused that oh, I can be in front of everybody, that's gonna waste a lot of time. Trust me, I've wasted so much time, and I want to save you the time so that you wouldn't have to waste it. So you want to ask who is going to be their audience, and ask for the demographic. Some demographic, it's like outrageous, right? And and we all seen. Post about certain magazine or certain feature articles for the insider, for the more、uh, seasoned coach who have done this or who knows in the marketing world. We all know what those magazines are. So if you brag about it, we all know how you got it there. <laughs> we all know how you got in, and so it becomes less of a 
secret, it becomes less impressive when you brag about the things that you have paid for in order to get in. And because we seasoned coaches, we all know what those places are. And so you wanted to know what their audience is and what their demographic breakdown is. Some of their feature article, their breakdown, and I have interviewed with them, I had com conversation with them, so I know. And some of them very broad and very sporadic. There's audience going all the way to India, there's audience going all the way to Europe. But if you're starting new, chances are you don't have a wide audience yet. And do you want to work with someone in India or are they going to be able to afford your coaching package? Those are the things I want you to start thinking about, right? So knowing who you're going to be in front of, ask a lot of questions whenever someone pitch to you for a pay to play. Okay, this is my tip. Whether or not you want to invest it in the first place, I'm gonna leave it up to you, but I'm sharing my experience. Hopefully you're going, going to get some insight whether or not you want to invest, whether you are getting the return of investment. And number two is some of these audiences are so outrageous that there's no point for you to even start. The third tip I have for you today before I wrap this up is that I don't want you to undervalue yourself. And I think this is a common belief that many new coaches, especially zero to like the third year in your business, you tend to undervalue your knowledge as a coach. And so anytime there's an opportunity that surfaces, you'll do it, you'll jump on it, but you forget that by jumping on it, you're actually doing yourself a disservice because now you're just serving everybody and your value just depreciate. And so what you want to treat yourself as is you are a absolutely amazing contributor to the world of education, to the world of coaching. Every piece of your knowledge that's out there is valuable and it, it's going to make a difference. It's going to make an impact. So do not undervalue your knowledge as a coach as your life experiences have brought you here so you want to be a contributor and not a beggar you're not a beggar to beg for visibility you are a contributor to a society for the wellness of people's education that's going to make an impact and difference in people's life and that was a huge aha moment for myself because then i realized oh yeah Actually, people need to pay me in order for me to speak, right? So that's a whole different change of mindset. And it's also going to allow you to position yourself with credibility and authority. Now, I do have a bonus tip for you. And this is something because you're watching this. And the bonus is that everything that you see has a strategy behind it. And so if you're someone who's just starting out new, your first step is not going to be the same for, with someone who have like three years or five years down the line. Your first step may be just honing in your message. Your first step may be just being clear about who do you serve and with what. And again, I dropped the link in the comment below. That's going to help you to narrow that down and hone in that message because that is essentially the foundation of what you build and how you build a successful online coaching business. That's your step number one. And so even before you think about, oh, I wanted to be on this show, I wanted to go pitch that one, I wanted to go spread my message here, and just being seen, right? But there's more strategy behind being seen than what you think it is, right? You need that strategy behind how you leverage of being on these podcasts, being on that articles, or being the guest writing this. You need to leverage that visibility, and a lot of newbie coaches don't have that strategy. And if that is you, okay, what I want you to do is shoot me a DM. We need to talk about your strategy. We need to look at what is it that you're doing and how can we leverage your visibility so that you can actually have a return of investment. And that's what I want for you because I'm spending so much money, wasted so much time doing things just to do the busy work. And now I'm done with the busy work. I want to save you from doing the busy work. So if that's what you're looking for, shoot me a DM. And I really look forward to seeing you and seeing you thrive. And until then, I will see you next week, the same time. Bring your coffee. We're going to have another coffee chat. Bye.